This cold air intake from S&B claims to beat out the competition, but today in this video, we're gonna find out does it actually deliver or if it's just marketing. Before me I have two very different cold air intake designs and both of these are designed for the OBS Fords with the 7.3 power stroke but I want to know is one design more superior than the other. Now a quick disclaimer here, um, my channel is much too small to be paid by any company to do the testing that we're about to do. So just note that I haven't been paid to do this, all of this has been funded by myself. Um, so, you know, support the channel if you can, like, share, comment, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, but with that out of the way, let's get down to the review. Okay, now this is your pretty typical cold air intake design. Um, it appears to be an older k and kit. It is a k and air filter. And also worth noting that this was cleaned and re-oiled before the test so that we can get the most accurate results as possible. Um, I've had it on the truck for the better part of a year. It was on the truck when I purchased it, but I've had some concerns with this kit as well as designs that are similar to this. Now, cold air intakes with designs such as this take in an absolute ton of air. But the issue that I foresee is happening is that primarily the air is coming from inside of the engine compartment or under the hood. Now, theoretically, that means that the air that's inside of the engine compartment is being heated up by the engine, the turbo, the headers, the radiator, etc., before it actually even has the opportunity of entering the intake. The SMB cold air intake design may have solved this problem. And the way it does this is the box that contains the filter is actually fully enclosed, except for this inlet here. And this gets installed in the truck just like that. This actually butts up against the space between the hood and the grill right in here. And that ensures that the intake is only ingesting air coming from outside of the engine compartment. It also has this really cool clear panel that you can peel open when it's actually time to change the filter. I just think it's really cool that you can see through it. Now, uh, I've actually already had this installed on the truck for the testing and I have a tendency to put tools on top of here so it gets scratched kind of easy, but still a really cool little feature. The other thing that I really like about this SMB design is look at how much larger <laughs> this air filter is compared to the K&N. And more surface area means that you're less likely to get a bunch of contamination in here that can block airflow. To compare both of these designs, we really want to know two primary things. One, what is the heat soak of each unit? We want to know which one is actually delivering the cooler air. Two, which unit will have an impact on the air that is exiting the turbo going into the motor? potentially affecting engine performance. Now as a really quick review, your turbo has two turbines. You have one on the exhaust side and one on the intake side. As the exhaust is leaving the motor, it spools this side of the turbine, which in turn transfers that motion into the intake side of the turbo, which sucks in air creating boost. Now, unfortunately, a side effect is that a lot of the heat from the exhaust side starts to leach onto the intake side, therefore heating up the air that's going into the combustion chamber. Now, it's also important to note that gas law states that if a gas is pressurized, but the volume stays the same, the temperature will increase. And this is the primary reason why temperatures increase so dramatically after a turbo is done compressing that gas together. So I want to know if the cold air intake design can affect this temperature, thus impacting performance. And this data is going to be significantly more important to collect for our next video when we actually start experimenting with an intercooler. To measure real world driving conditions, I installed each cold air intake on my truck. I then drove a 33 mile route at 75 miles per hour using the cruise control. Now along this route, I basically used land markers as checkpoints to determine when to collect data of the temperature outside, the temperature that was recorded inside of the intake box at the time, as well as the temperature that's exiting the turbo. Now to simulate how these units will perform under load, I conducted the same exact test, except this time, loaded with my 2,400 pound truck camper. 
It's important to note though that with truck campers, they're pretty tall and I wanted to try to minimize the wind resistance. So instead of conducting this at 75 miles per hour, we did 70 miles per hour with the cruise control. Now, one thing to consider as we're reviewing the results of this test is just note that I am conducting this test in a high elevation desert and we're roughly 4,800 feet above sea level. So your results can vary as air density changes. But being in a high elevation desert means that we're probably getting gusts every now and then too. So just kind of keep that in mind. That's a variability that unfortunately is just gonna be involved in the test. Okay, here we go. We are getting ready for our test with just your run-of-the-mill average cold air intake that you can buy for these things. I don't know if it's a K&N, I don't know what brand this is, it, honestly it just came with the truck. I actually hate this setup, I, I don't like it, but we're going to test it anyway to see if the SMB intake over this is actually that much better. Now you're going to notice that I've got the um, ambient air temperature sensor here. Now this is the same physical place that it will be at the... Um, on the S and B box, but you can tell the hole here is just a little bit too big for my sensor to fit in. So I've just zip tied it in the same area as the other one. Um, the truck's ambient temperature sensor is roughly in the same area as the S and B. I'm trying to make these things read in the same area. And then you can see here, I've got another ambient air temperature sensor that comes out of the Y plenum from the turbo. So we'll get the same reading and we have no intercooler on this setup at all. Really what we're looking for is to see how much this system heats up the air post the turbo and to see if there's a huge temperature influx between the ambient air temperature outside and the air temperature that's going in there. Okay, looking inside the cab, this is our first run. This is the K&N cold air intake with no load. Uh, we're going 75 miles per hour on cruise control. And uh, this is uh, one of the checkpoints, one of the many checkpoints that we had while collecting data. Now, just to kind of show you how I'm collecting the data, you can see here that I recently installed a glow shift um, gauge here. And uh, what's really cool is it has two ambient air temperature sensor readings in the same gauge. So the top reading is going to be that ambient air temperature sensor that is directly next to the cold air intake filter. So this is gonna give us an idea of the temperature of the air that is entering that filter going through the cold air intake, quote unquote, cold air intake. Now that bottom uh, reading that you see there is going to be the temperature of the air post the turbo. So remember the gas law, as you compress a gas, it heats up. We also have the leaching temperature from the exhaust as well as the heat soak from the cold air intake heating up as well. So two different temperature readings here that we will be using to compare in our data. But uh, this kind of just gives you an idea of, of how we were collecting this data and what it looked like inside of the cab. Okay, so uh, I've got the camper loaded here. Again, uh, the camper dry is 2,400 pounds and there's food in there and tools in the truck. So we're probably pressing 2,600 plus pounds for the load here. Okay, so I very briefly just wanna go over how we calculated everything. Now remember along that 33 mile trip for each iteration of this test, um, we had landmarkers and at those landmarkers, we took three different temperatures. We took the temperature that was outside, we took the ambient air temperature at the intake, and then we took the temperature reading from post the turbo all via the glow shift gauge that we installed. Now, to calculate heat soak, this is the predominant piece of data that we want to collect. It's going to tell us how hot the air is getting just through the intake, okay? So, uh, to calculate heat soak, we are gonna take the intake temperature that we recorded inside the glow shift gauge that's in the cab, and we're going to subtract that from the ambient air temperature outside, and that's going to give us our heat soak. So as an example, if it's 90 degrees outside at the time of recording and our intake temperature records 110 degrees, then you just simply take 110, subtract 90, and that gives you 20 degrees, which means that our intake is increasing air temperature by 20 degrees. Next, we wanted to see if either cold air intake would affect performance. To do that, in my opinion, the best way to measure this is by measuring that post turbo outlet temperature. And to do that, you take the recorded outlet temperature reading from the gauge, subtract it from the ambient air temperature outside, and that will give you the outlet turbo temperature. 
So as another example, at the time recording, if it's 100 degrees outside and the turbo outlet temperature recorded 180 degrees, then you subtract 180 from 100, that gives you 80, meaning the turbo compressor has increased air temperature by 80 degrees. Okay, so let's take a look at our KNN results. Um, taking a look at the unloaded test, our heat soak was 19.5 degrees versus the loaded test being 22 degrees. That means that on average, our cold air intake is increasing those temperatures by either 19.5 degrees unloaded and 22 degrees loaded. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, 20 degrees really isn't that much of a difference. Imagine working in the middle of a hot July day, the middle of the day, would you rather work at 100 degrees or 80 degrees? I'd rather work at the 80 degrees. So remember that even a single digit in temperature can change the efficiency model of your motor, and it can mean the difference between either winning the race or breaking something. Next, let's take a look at the turbo outlet temperature. Remember, this is gonna be something we're gonna compare to show off the efficiency um, and also to see if potentially our performance can be impacted. So unloaded, the turbo is increasing air temperature by an average of 110 degrees uh, versus loaded is going to be 149.5 degrees. So a, a decent amount there. Um, I gotta be honest though, truthfully, um, without an intercooler on these old 7.3 power strokes, I really thought those numbers were gonna be a lot higher. So I am actually really impressed <laughs> with the temperatures here. Some diesels can get upwards to 300 degrees. So the fact that we are still in the hundreds is pretty impressive. Now you're also gonna notice there's a third chunk of data here. It's kind of this yellow orange color. Um, this is just the difference in temperature between both readings. So if you were to take 110, subtract 19.5, you're gonna get 90.5. This chunk of data is going to be significantly more important for our follow-up video when we actually start uh, experimenting with intercoolers, but it's a good indicator there when we start comparing back-to-back. -back. Okay, time for the test with just the SNB cold air intake box and kit here. We have the cold air that flushes in through the front only. There's a plug on the side that I have plugged up, so we're only getting fresh air from outside. And we have no intercooler setup. We just have a sensor that will be reading the uh, intake temperature after the turbo. And then we've got an ambient temp sensor inside of the box here so that we can tell the difference. Okay, we got the camper loaded here. So this is gonna be our loaded test with the S&B cold air intake and no intercooler. Okay, here we go, first checkpoint. Looks like we're maintaining pretty much like 98 intake and 230 out. So that's uh, pretty much what we've been maintaining. Now let's take a look at our S&B results and they're very interesting. So unloaded, our heat soak on average increased by 11 degrees. The air is increasing on average with the S&B unit at 11 degrees. That's pretty impressive. You have to remember that you're always gonna have some amount of heat soak, but you want that number to be as small as possible. So already seeing an improvement here, but here's where the curveball hits. Take a look at the loaded test. Our heat soak is eight degrees. Now, when I first saw this on the charts, I actually had to recalculate my data in case I made a mistake. And I had to review some footage to try to understand what was going on here. And I think I can explain this. I can explain why under loaded instances, the SMB actually performed better. And it all comes down to your turbo boost. Unloaded at 75 miles per hour, uh, my boost is usually somewhere between five and six PSI at 75 miles per hour on the interstate. Loaded, however, my turbo boost was somewhere between six and eight PSI. So our turbo is spooling much more air. So, since the air is coming from outside, as the air is passing through this intercooler when we're loaded, it's passing fast enough that it doesn't dwell long enough to actually absorb that ambient uh, heat that's from inside of the hood. So really interesting here to see that that actually performed better under load with higher boost. Really super cool, I, I really liked seeing that. Now let's take a look at our post outlet temperatures here from the turbo. Um, on the unloaded test, we recorded an average increase of 107.5 degrees versus the loaded test, we had 134.5 degrees. 
Okay, so now that we have both test results, let's mush them on the same graph, that way we can compare. Let me draw your attention to the left part of this graph first, where we can compare the unloaded test results. For heat soak, the SMB on average increased air temperature by 11 degrees, versus the K&N at 19.5 degrees. Clear winner here. But did either improve efficiency and performance after the turbo? It looks like they did. The SMB taking another win here at 107.5 degree average versus the K&N at 110 degree. And you have to remember that every degree of temperature here really counts. So we do have a clear winner here. Truthfully, I expected these to be a little more dramatically different, but I was still pleasantly surprised to see that the SMB still beat out the K&N on this, on, on this particular data set. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the loaded test results because this is where it gets really, really dramatic. So on average, the SMB uh, intake increased air temperatures by about eight degrees versus the K&N at 22 degrees. So notice here, that where the SMB actually improved its performance under load, the K&N got dramatically worse. We're, in, we're digesting hotter air here. I mean, that's, that's the only explanation here. But take a look at the performance figures here for the turbo outlet temperature. On the SMB, we had 134.5 degrees versus the K&N at 149.5 degrees. So another clear win here with the SMB, and I think it just goes to show that if you can try to funnel in as much cooler air from outside of the vehicle as possible, you're gonna have clear results. So I'm gonna do my best not to sound like an SMB fanboy here, although this product has kind of made me one. Um, but what I want you to take away from this data, um, make informed decisions when it comes to putting products on your vehicles, guys. Uh, now, these cold air intakes are designed to take in the maximum amount of air as possible, but you have to remember that if it's hot air, um, it's going to be less dense, which means it's going to have less oxygen. So it's always better to take in a cooler, higher density air because that's going to give you more oxygen, which means better efficiency. And you know, in a lot of cases, um, if you're looking for performance upgrades like this, honestly, the best upgrade that you can do is leaving the factory box and just getting a better air filter. I'm not saying that that's the solution for everything, but in most cases, I think you're going to be fine by just getting a nicer air filter. So that's it in today's episode. Um, we do have an upcoming video that's going to be comparing these results to an intercooler that cools the air after the turbo. So I'm really excited about that. We are gonna be putting to the test a diesel light water to air intercooler. It's a new product. Haven't seen too many videos online to show whether or not this thing actually works or not. And we put this thing through the paces. I think you're gonna be really surprised with the data that we show. So stick around. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. We're a pretty small channel, so we can use all the support that we can get. And most importantly, stick around for next week when we actually post our water to air intake results. Uh -huh.